Welcome back, Shade Agents. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer back with another Division 2 Warlords of New York Title Update 8 Breakdown. And after getting to experience this latest expansion and finish the campaign, I am now ready to showcase five rules to follow concerning gear and weaponry and give you quick tips for navigating and understanding Gear 2.0. But before I begin the video, I would like to sincerely thank you for the overwhelming support you have shown my previous Warlords of New York video. But within that, I have done a bit of research. I noticed that over 80% of my views are from viewers that are not yet subscribers. So if you like the content you see on my channel, take just a second to hit that sub button and don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications for my YouTube channel. And with that, let's begin. Within Gear 2.0 was a complete overhaul to weaponry, and with it comes our first rule, and that being W, 2 of 3, plus T equals KD. Now, I'll come back to this equation in a moment, but this new revamped weapon system steers clear of interface overload and provides clear and concise information that a player can use to make informed decisions. For a level 40 weapon, there are now two core attributes, one attribute and one weapon talent, and that's it. Ideally, a player is looking for a weapon with all three attributes that are at maximum values as displayed in the stat bars and the exact weapon talent that you want. Now, this will happen infrequently and will require a bit of luck. However, through the use of the stat library, an agent has the opportunity to fine tune their weaponry to meet their specific needs. And this is where the recal library will come into play. And if you start investing time into this new mechanic during the early portions of your Warlords campaign, it will pay huge dividends later on. The recal library will allow you to take all the weaponry highlights you loot during your playtime and store them for future weapon enhancement recalibrations. Now for a quick breakdown of the weapon equation. W equals the weapon. Is it the right archetype that you are looking for? If your build is set up to use LMGs and the weapon you loot is an SMG, this may not be the best weapon to equip. Two of three refers to the two core attributes and one attribute. For maximum results and efficiency, you are looking for two of these three attributes to be at maximum percentage or at least extremely high. T equals the weapon talent. Does it fit your build, weapon, and playstyle? And finally, the KD is short for keep or deconstruct and this should be self-explanatory. If a weapon is the wrong type, has two or more low attribute roles, or has the wrong talent, you should next look to extract the weapon talent for your library, or if it does have one extremely high attribute percentage, extract that for future use. When a weapon does drop with an extremely high attribute roll, the plume above the weapon will have an upwards facing chevron to alert the agent to thoroughly inspect that weapon as one of the attribute roles is high. Now, just because a weapon has low core attributes, it is not necessarily useless. You can still extract the weapon talent and store it to your recalibration library. Once a weapon talent has been extracted and stored in the library for that specific weapon type, if it appears again on another weapon from that type, it will be designated by this symbol on the weapon talent, signifying that the talent has already been stored. Gear stats and talents function in much the same way as weaponry, but with it we get a new rule of B plus 2 of 3 plus T equals KD. Gear can roll with one of three core attributes, which include weapon damage, skill tier, and armor. Each gear piece will also include two attribute rolls, and body armor and backpacks are the only two pieces of gear to also include gear talents. An agent can fully invest into one of these three core attributes to go full glass cannon, tank, or skill build, or invest into all three for a build that can do a little of everything. Attributes are used to fine tune the build by adding additional percentage rolls ranging from weapon handling to status effects and everything in between. Gear pieces with abnormally high core attributes or attribute rolls will be signified by this darkened area below the attribute insignia to alert an agent that at least one attribute on that particular piece of gear is extremely high and should be examined. An agent will need to examine the gear piece by using the gear rule, starting with the B, which stands for brand set, and identifying if that is the brand set they are looking for. Next, by looking at the core attribute and attribute roles, two of three, they can evaluate the piece for overall strength. Now ideally, the core attribute and two attribute percentages are at full maximum, but if they aren't, a decision will need to be made. 
if more than one of the attribute roles is low, or if the combination of the core attribute and attribute roles are completely wrong for your build, then move to the KD portion of the rule. Just like in the weaponry rule, the T stands for talent, and these are only available on the body armor and backpack. As before, the KD stands for keep or discard. When it comes to weaponry and gear recalibration, it is important to understand how best to use this mechanic since you can only recalibrate one item. And with this comes our next rule, which is stay away from recalibrating talents. If the gear piece or weapon doesn't stay within the framework for min-maxing your build, look at the pieces for stat or talent extraction and then just move on. If you are using this basic rule, you should not be using the recal station to roll talents onto your weapon or gear, as this is the completely incorrect way to use this mechanic efficiently. Only if the gear piece drops in a god rolled form, with it being the exact weapon type or gear brand piece you were seeking, with all attributes at full maximum, should you ever consider using the recal station to change talents on your weaponry or gear. For weaponry, the simple rule is to look for at least two of the three attributes to be extremely high along with the correct weapon talent. Now, Within this framework, you can actively search for a suitable donor weapon for the subpar attribute and once it is found, extract that attribute to your recalibration library and finally recalibrate the primary weapon so that all three attributes are near maximum percentage values. Gear works in a parallel track and that the rules are very much the same. Look for brand set pieces that suit your build concept and have two of the three attribute percentages at maximum or near max values. If the gear piece is body armor or a backpack, also evaluate the gear talent to identify it as one that complements your build concept. If you are looking for maximum damage output, invest into weapon damage as your core attribute. Tanks should look for armor and skill builds will look to invest into skill tier as their core attributes. Now, if the gear piece is the correct brand set, has two of three attribute percentages at maximum percentage or near max, and has the correct talent, that is the ideal piece to keep and recalibrate. Smart agents always check the vendors, and this brings us to rule number four, to always check the vendors for missing items. Sometimes you will get lucky and the vendors or gun runner, Cassie Mendoza, will have a god rolled item, but overall, using these sources to supplement your recalibration library is a very smart option. Vendors often have pieces of gear or weaponry that may not be the best overall, but have one attribute that is rolled extremely high, or they have a talent that you don't often see. By purchasing the weapon or gear and then extracting that talent or role to your library, you now have that attribute role or talent to use indefinitely for future recalibrations. Remember to look for this symbol on the weapon or gear talent to signify that you already have that talent in your recalibration library and would therefore not need to purchase the item from the vendor. We've made it to the end of this breakdown. Perhaps this fifth and final rule should have been first on the list, but here it is anyways. In regards to your old level 30 gear, it is now fairly useless and it's time to let it go. So rule number five is that you need to spend a few minutes and either sell, break down for materials, or extract all the maximum attributes off of your old level 30 gear. Now most veteran agents have hoarded hundreds of pieces of gear over the past year and now that Warlords of New York is here and the level cap has been raised to level 40, those builds and pieces are underpowered. I personally unfavorited all my level 30 pieces and extracted their maximum attributes to my recal library while holding on to a few sentimental pieces. Once you hit anything above level 30 during your Warlords of New York campaign, you will see your perfectly crafted gear score 500 builds reduced to useless. Now there is one exception to this rule and it has to do with mods, as level 30 mods are compatible with level 31 to 40 gear, and since the overall effectiveness of mods has been greatly reduced, equipping a level 30 mod on a level 40 piece of gear really won't expose a huge weakness, like if you equip a level 30 weapon and attempt a mission against level 40 enemies. Spend a bit of time comparing your mods, as all the values and some of the attributes have changed. Only keep the highest values, as there is no longer any skill power requirements to equip the mods, and you will now only depend on if the gear has a mod slot. And this will complete my five rules to follow concerning gear and weaponry in Title Update 8. If you haven't yet done so, I would greatly appreciate you smashing that sub button and clicking on the bell icon to receive those channel notifications. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up. If not, with a thumbs down. 
If you feel like supporting my YouTube channel, check in the video description for links to my Patreon page and merchandise store. Follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related with a heavy emphasis on the Division franchise. And until my next upload, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off. Thank <music> you.